like many of you this past week, uh, I heard the news about the shooting in Texas and it brought back memories um, for me. I mean, we've seen a lot of school shootings in the past, you know, 20 years, 30 years. I remember as a, as a teenager going to my grandparents' house and, and um, the Columbine shooting was taking place. I remember I, I, I didn't live far from Paducah, Kentucky, and there was the shooting at the prayer circle in, in Paducah, Kentucky. And, and uh, it just seems every year, two or three times, it makes the news. There's, there's this big school shooting. Um, good guy with gun stops bad guy with gun. Ultimately, seems to always be the, the end. If not, uh, the shooter shoots themselves after killing their victims. And, and so the topic comes up, uh, what, what about gun control? And a lot of Christians want to have uh, input on this. And um, I saw one person said every Christian should be willing to lay aside their rights uh, to defend the innocent. And, and I understand what he's saying. I understand the hurt behind that. Um, but I also believe that as Christians, we are called to defend our families. Uh, as Christian men, we are to protect our wives and children. And that also comes into play. Now, I want to be clear in this video. I, I'm not saying you have to own a gun or should own a gun. Um, I personally do. I think that many people um, do decide to buy guns because they are afraid and they want to protect themselves. And that's I, I, I'm here to tell you that's not wrong. It's OK to want to defend yourselves. The argument quickly becomes, well, why do you need a bigger gun? Why do you need an AR-15 is the common thing. And, you know, those of you who don't know me, you don't know my testimony, you don't know my history. I've worked with some pretty dangerous people in my life. Uh, I've worked in some pretty rough areas of our country's, one of our country's biggest cities. And uh, I understand the need for escalation. You know, when the criminals buy bigger guns, the law has to buy bigger guns. Because the law buys bigger guns, the, the criminals want to buy bigger guns. And it goes back and forth until everybody's shooting at each other in tanks, right? So as a pastor, I, I now have to go back and say, well, what does Scripture tell us about gun control? Does Scripture tell us anything about gun control? Typically, when the topic comes up, we all know they didn't have guns in biblical times. They had swords, they had arrows, they had uh, slings, right? David killed Goliath with a rock. Um, the one thing everybody always seems to want to point to is Cain killed Abel with a rock. And, and if it really comes down to it and people have hate and sin in their heart and they want to commit a murder they're going to find a way to do it. And and that's not wrong, but the idea of gun control is, but if we take away the, the bigger, more uh, powerful weapons, then they'll have fewer rocks to use, right? And nobody ever talks about cigarette control. You know, cigarettes kill more people than guns and, and families have to watch as their, as their family member, their loved one dies slowly from the cancer. Uh, nobody talks about pit bull control. Pit bulls are, are dangerous animals, everyone tells us. No, 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 only those who raise them wrong. Well, nobody would want to euthanize all the pit bulls in our nation. They're, you can own another dog, right? You could get an Australian Shepherd like I have or, or a Poodle or a, a Labrador. You don't have to have such an aggressive, mean dog. That could, that could also be an argument. Um, I know of kids who've been mauled by pit bulls, but I've also, um, as someone who's been chased by a pit bull a time or two in his life, I can tell you I've also, I've also met some pretty kind, pretty loving pit bull dogs. And guns are no different, really. Actually, guns are more different because guns are inanimate. They don't make the decision to bite. Someone behind them does, someone who pulls that trigger. As much as someone trains a pit bull to attack, someone can use a gun for violent ends. But we don't hear about that. We don't hear about cigarette control. In fact, people have taxed cigarettes and put warning labels on them, but people still use them. And it always, of course, comes back to that sin problem 
that's within the heart of every man, woman, and child. For all have sinned, Romans tells us. So we go back. What does scripture tell us? What's it tell us about guns? People love to quote Jesus and say, you know, Jesus said those who live by the sword die by the sword. So if you want to live by guns, you'll die by guns or, or something. And that's actually, it's quoting from John 18, 11, uh, after Peter cuts off the servant Malchus's ear. Um, Jesus was not condemning Peter for having a gun. Okay, I want to be clear about that. That may be the argument that's used, but that's not a good argument. Jesus is not condemning Peter for owning a gun, uh, uh, or sorry, a sword. He's not saying, Peter, you shouldn't own a sword. He's saying the way you used it is wrong. You know, there's nothing wrong. I think Jesus would agree with this. I think Jesus does agree with this. There's nothing wrong with using a sword to defend. But there is something wrong when we go on the attack and we decide to hurt people for the sake of hurting people. In fact, actually in Luke's gospel, the disciples tell Jesus they have two swords. And this is in Luke 22, 38. They tell Jesus that they have two swords and Jesus says, well, that's enough. That's fine because they can protect themselves. But where does the Bible talk about gun control? That's the real question, right? That's where does it, where does it come to this sword control? There actually is something the Bible talks about. In 1 Samuel chapter 13, the Philistines took away all of Israel's guns, took away their swords and I imagine the argument could have easily become, why do you need a sword? You know, are you, do deer not respond well to just you shooting arrows or traps? Or are you not getting enough food from your beef that you have to kill a wild animal? You know, why do you need to have those things? And well, the reason was the Philistines were an oppressive people. And it says in, in 1 Samuel 13, verse 19, there was no blacksmith to be found throughout all the land of Israel for the Philistines said, lest the Hebrews make themselves swords or spears. They took away all the swords from Israel, took away from, from all the Jewish people to the point only Saul was able to get his hands on a sword because he was king. Everyone else had to fight with what they had. And the lesson is simply this. It's never really about the or the, or the sword. It's about the control over the people. And if history, if, if scripture tells us anything from that, it's that whenever uh, people are, is oppressed, they're going to rise up with whatever they've got. You know, David killed their biggest fighter, not with a sword, but with a rock and some fabric. So what does scripture tell us about gun control? Well, first and foremost, it doesn't. It talks about sword control, and it doesn't paint those who would take away swords in a good light. So unless you want to be on the side of the Philistines and take away all the swords, then sure, okay, you can do that. Uh, but you see what happened to them. You see the conflict that arose, and you see the, the real mentality behind it all was to oppress the people and keep them down. And the idea, even when we talk about the Second Amendment, it's not so that I can go out and, and kill whatever I want or whoever I want. It's so that I can protect my family. And it does keep the government in check. We hate to say that. And I, as a pastor, I, I don't want to tell you how to vote or who to vote for or anything political like that. But I'm telling you that our leaders need to know. I, I think it was Alan Moore who said it best. People should not be afraid of their governments. Governments should be afraid of their people because the people could rise up. The people could do these things. And, and yeah, when the president of the United States says, good luck, we've got all the nukes, that's a threat. That's something we as citizens should be alarmed by and keep in mind. But as Christians, where do we take this? Where do we go with this? Well, if you as an individual do not want to own a gun and you think you can protect your family with a, a set of nunchucks you bought at Dick's Sporting Goods or, or whatever at the county fair, hey, that's your right. That's your opinion. I think the best way to protect my family is when someone hears the click clack of my 45 on the other side of the door and they begin to rethink their decisions. But ultimately, when we look at scripture, it's not the sword that is ever the issue. It's the heart 
behind its use. And if we're going to try and regulate a weapon, first we have to ask, can we regulate a human heart? And we can't. So when we get on the topic of gun control, what's the Christian's response? It's not, you, you're not going to take away my guns. The Christian's response is, first, why don't we address the heart issue? Why don't we address what's going on inside the mind of a person who makes this choice, who makes this murderous desire uh, take place, right? Carried out, who carries it out. So that's my take on those things. I think that we are looking at a deeper issue than whether or not someone owns uh, a weapon. The real issue is whether or not a person has a, a heart bent on malice, a heart bent on sin. And the truth is we all do. Every single person, like I said, Romans 3.23 tells us, all have sinned and come, fall short of the glory of God. So what's the cure for that? Well, the only cure for the sin that defiles us is Jesus Christ, our King, who died on a cross for our sins, taking our sin, taking our malice, taking our wickedness upon himself and being that, that atonement for us and three days later rises from the grave and ascends to the Father. The disciples saw it. There's eyewitness accounts that saw it, that saw him over 500 by the time the apostle Paul writes to the Corinthians. And finally, Paul himself says he appeared to him. Only believing in Christ and having his Holy Spirit change your heart is, is ever going to keep you from carrying out sin. Being, it frees you from sin. You may still have sin, but you're not going to sin at the same level. Those who carry out murder and, and violence and wickedness in the name of Christ, they're not Christians. They've missed the point. They've lost the plot. And for this young man who chose to gun down children and their teachers in Texas, he lost the plot. There's something deeper going on in that was going on in his life and in his heart and in his mind. So I don't think the biblical response is to take away guns. And I don't think the biblical response is everybody should own a gun. But I think the biblical response is, what's the heart behind the use of the gun or the sword or the spear or the rock? So those are the things we should be talking about. Those are the things we should be asking. And with that all said, uh, that's it for this video. And this is actually my first video on this channel. The previous one was um, uh, a repeat of one from my personal channel that I made, but uh, it was a response to my friend David Clayson's Bible video. If you wanna check that out, go ahead. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. Hope that this has given you some food for thought. Um, I'm sure in the comments, people aren't even gonna watch the whole video before they start typing out their responses. That's fine but just something to um, consider and think about. So thanks a lot.